Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with this, uh, what I would call a chonky boy. <laughs> this is a Moon Man pen that is meant to be dropper filled. And I think this is a fairly new model. I think it's called the Q1, but I will make sure that I put the link to this product down below. I just purchased mine off of Amazon. Uh, but I've seen it in some various other places as well, like eBay, um, and I think I've seen it at a few stores on Etsy. So it comes in this little box. I've obviously already taken it out. Uh, what I always find kind of funny about Moon Man, because I do have a few Moon Man pens, it says, feel the temperature of writing. I'm not quite sure what that feels like, because... <laughs> I'm not sure what they mean by that, but uh, but it's but it's cute nonetheless. But anyway, it comes in this little box. It was nestled in here, wrapped in a little plastic wrap. It has this um, instruction booklet, which is all in Chinese, I assume, uh, and they clearly include it with several different models because uh, it shows you how to fill several several different types of pens. This particular one is an eyedropper fill, so. And it does come with an, an eyedropper here to fill the belly of the pen. So I'm going to go ahead and close this box up and put it to the side. I do actually have some ink picked out. I'm going to put Honey Burst by Diamine in here. I have a lot of this ink because um, this whole series, which was a guitar series, uh, I really, really love all the colors, so I purchased larger bottles of these. So I figure since I have so much available of this, I mean, this, uh, I might be able to fill up, you know, this little uh, reservoir here maybe four times with that ink, but we'll see. Um, I have not replaced the nib on this, although I usually do for Moon Man pens, but I figured I would try this one out first to see how it works. I actually did notice that the nib is, um, you can screw out the nib. I'll show you that real quick. Um, and it looks a lot like a Bach housing here, Bach brand housing, but when I tried to put a Bach nib in here, it did not fit, or at least it uh, felt a little tight and I didn't want to force it. So I'm not sure if you could just put a Bach unit in here, but you can always just take the nib out and swap out the nib with another size six nib, which is what this is, which is very handy. And it's kind of nice. And this, um, this nib unit also does have some little plastic pieces, which I assume is to, um, prevent leaking from this reservoir here. So it has a little rubber seal down here at the end, and then it also has another little rubber seal up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the nib back in. And I took a look at how things looked when you take the bottom end off of the pen. It's pretty tight, and there is a little rubber seal here, but I think just to be safe, I'm going to add some extra silicone grease to the threads just so that, you know, I, I can have that extra layer of protection so that it doesn't leak. But I don't think you need to. This, this is just my um, perhaps OCD at wanting to make sure that nothing leaks out of the pen. So I do have a paper towel here. I'm actually gonna take off a little piece of this so that I can um, wipe the silicone grease off my fingers and then not taint my larger towel. So I'm going to do that before I fill. Let's go ahead. I do have this silicone grease, which I purchased off of Amazon. I will go ahead and put a link to this. It's heavy um, and, it's, and it is specifically for pens, but uh, I've since learned, I think at one point on one of my videos, I recommended that you could use one of the um, little silicone grease containers that come with Twisby pens. And I think that that's probably not viscous enough, uh, thick enough basically, in order to be used for this purpose. I mean, you could try it and it probably would create a little bit of a seal, but this is gonna be a little bit better, uh, heavier silicone. Okay, so I'm just going to open this up and it's been sideways. So there's some all over the cap and inside, but I'm just gonna put it around these threads here. I'm just going to take a little in my on my finger and just run my finger around and it looks like I might need a little bit more those threads kind of grabbed all that grease right away 
Okay, so now I have a decent amount. I'm gonna wipe it off of my finger with this little piece of paper towel here. I'm also going to just sort of rub around the end and I'm gonna do another wipe of the outside once I've sealed this in case any leaks out. So I'm just gonna lay that there while I fill the body. And it's always a good idea to put on the silicone grease before you fill the body because then you have to uh, be really careful with how you're holding the body of the pen that's going to be filled. So in looking at this, I think I probably shouldn't fill it any more than um, you can see there's a little bit of a step down and a line down there. I'm probably not gonna fill it any more than this area here. So basically up to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this bottle of ink. And I am gonna use the dropper that came with this, but you could use any dropper that you have. Um, I could also use any dropper that I have, but just because this is here, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It is nice to have the dropper so that you're not getting, you're not pouring anything in and not getting ink all over the uh, threads because um, I don't think there's much chance of leaking. I think it's more, you know, if, if you get it on the threads, it, it looks more messy, but I don't think it would cause a problem for you. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep filling and keep filling until I am almost to that top. That's so close that I think I'm gonna stop there. And I will rinse this out just by squeezing it in and out into a cup of water. And uh, I am gonna close this really carefully, but you know, if you, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I would go ahead and put on the nib first. So like I said, we have our silicone grease on there. I am just going to twist it. Definitely feels like it's creating a pretty good seal here. And I'm gonna tighten that up. It, it really can't go over tightened, so I'm just gonna wipe this off real quickly. I don't know how much there is, if any, outside, but I just don't wanna get that on my fingers. And then I'll just throw this little piece away because I don't want there to be cross-contamination here. I am going to close that up and then tilt it upside down for a short period of time. And usually what I do is I, <laughs> this is too fat for my pen well that's off to the side, but usually I would leave it upside down in the pen well that I have that holds my pen. Um, I would just hold it like this until um, there was a decent amount of time had passed so that the ink had gone all the way through to the nib. I'm just gonna hold it like this for a, a minute or two. And while I'm waiting for that to go down, in there. Ooh, let me make sure my silicone grease is sealed up. I don't know if silicone grease um, dries out. Who would think not? Or gets, you know, more thick as it sits around. So I basically had a little cup of water off to the side, so I just flushed water in and out there. So that's pretty clean. And then I'm going to wipe that off a little bit. And then I'm just gonna put it off to the side so that can dry. And then we don't need our ink anymore, nor do we need our silicone grease. I have my pen test A5 Galen Folio here, and I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get some ink flowing out of this pen here. So, oops, a little piece of stray paper there. All right. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. So as you can see, it looks very nice in the barrel here. Um, this particular color I also thought would look very nice in there. It's kind of why I chose it and it would kind of look nice with the gold trim. Um, so you can post this pen. So it posts like that. If you don't post it, it's gonna be pretty darn short because it's pretty tiny. Um, tiny yet big. <laughs> It's a little chonky boy. Um, so I think posted would probably be best. Uh, the grip actually feels quite nice in my hand. I have another pen that's similar to this. Actually, let me get it out. I'm not gonna be able to test that pen because it doesn't have ink in it right now, but I do have a vintage platinum pen that has a similar body shape, but it's actually even a little smaller than this one. 
So back in the day, there actually used to be, I don't, and I don't know how long ago a day is, <laughs> back in the day, uh, they used to make, in the Japanese market, there used to be uh, quite a market for these little chunky pens. And I think it was for people with arthritis because it was easier to write with a fatter pen. Um, I'm gonna put a link down below to the video where I go through um, the, the, um, the aspects of this pen and how it writes. I don't have any ink in it right now, so I can't test that for you compared to this one, but it is similar in size, although this one is bigger. So let's go ahead and see. Ah, yeah, we're flowing, excellent. I will zoom in a little bit more and again, I'm not sure about the nib yet. I'm not sure if I want to keep it on this pen. Let's see how we're doing here. Make sure we're flowing pretty well. Okay, so this is the Moon Man Q1. Would I call this a pocket pen? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it is a dropper fill pen. And just based on this limited usage, I probably will change the nib just because it's not that super smooth like I would like it to be. Um, but, uh, but it's a perfectly fine nib. This ink is Diamine Honey Burst. And I tend to hold my pens further back, especially when, um, um, this little grip section is somewhat smaller, although I don't know if it's smaller. It just, it, compared to the, the width of the pen, it seems smaller. So I'm actually holding all the way back here when I'm writing, which is actually still pretty comfortable. It's not uncomfortable for me to grip it like that. So let's go ahead and do the quick brown fox. And I'm going to do this in block lettering too. I'll move that up a little bit. Yeah, this nib is not exactly a lovely experience for, for me. Um, I think it's a little better with the cursive. Um, than for this, but I also have to remember that this only just got ink in the feed. So if I, I'm going to let this sit for a day, uh, come back to it, try it again, see how I like the feel of it. But my guess is that I probably will uh, aim to replace this nib with something else. But I can replace it with any other size 6 nib if I just pull out the feed and the nib with a little rubber grip or um, something like that and I can just pull it out it's friction fit so um, it should be pretty easy to swap out and hopefully with that addition I mean I really love the shape and size of this pen it's actually very comfortable to write with and it is um, I would say very comfortable for someone who's had you know joint issues before um, so there you go let me know if you have any questions about this pen. I didn't really go into any great detail about it, but uh, just ask me questions below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. This is my very messy writing up here. I just was really trying to try this pen out and show you how to fill it. All right, and I will put a link to this pen. It's very inexpensive on Amazon right now. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.